Hello everybody, my name is Jamie, and today I'm going to be following along kind of with a tutorial series that is already on YouTube by Coden Moore. And uh, what he does is he creates a 2D Java, Java game, uh, but what we're going to be doing is a 2D JavaScript game. So we're going to be following along with his structure, the way he does things, but I'm kind of porting it over for JavaScript. There's some changes, things that need to be made uh, differently. And uh, I'm going to be doing those so that we can have a web-based 2D side-scrolling game, tile-based uh, three-quarter view game, something like that um, by the time we're done. <clears throat> so Coden Moore is uh, a great, great uh, coder. He's he got some really good videos. He does even more than just, uh, just uh, stuff with Java. He has a lot of tutorials. Uh, I suggest checking him out. It's really awesome stuff. Uh, he's got his whole playlist here, 25 videos so far with the new beginner 2D pro, uh, game programming. It's really nice. It's really awesome. And you'll see uh, everything that I'm doing here is going to be around the same workflow as his uh, with uh, the same end results. Only we're going to be doing it in Java So if or JavaScript. So if you want to try out the Java, go ahead and go here. I'll probably have an annotation with a link to it. So first thing that we're going to need to do is uh, get started and create the project. So I've already created a project um, inside of WebStorm. Now you can create your project with Notepad++. Um, I'm just using an IDE just so I can have my project stuff, uh, project folders and stuff off to the left a little easier. Notepad++ does have a workspace and projects uh, folder like navigation on the left but I just find it to be a little bit easier with uh, WebStorm. So all I've did is so far I've created the project and uh, which set up the folder structure and, and that's about it. So I have a JS, I have a, a root tile game folder, I have a JavaScript folder, um, I've got blank game.html and index.html right on the root folder there. Within our JavaScript or JS folder, I've created an app.js uh, file, a libs folder, and an app folder. Um, now, libs is going to contain the libraries we need. App is going to be application or game specific stuff um, such as our launcher and all of our classes. Uh, so from inside the classes though we're going to be building uh, all of the necessary things to get uh, our game running that's where we're going to spend most of our time we will be in the apps.js uh, file a lot as we're building it up and uh, basically the apps.js just configures one of our libraries and um, and uh, makes things a lot simpler for us so to get started I'm going to uh, get the libraries going. So we're going to have a class.js library, jQuery, which I believe we'll use a little bit, and then our required JS, which is going to kind of be the the root core management system for loading in all the things that each of our classes needs. So required JS is just a library that you can download here um, at requirejs.org. Uh, nothing special needs to happen to it. You just grab it save it into the libs folder. Um, the other thing is this class uh, this class that uh, extends uh, it's a it's a library that it basically creates the ability to extend a class so if we have a root class and we want to create a class that utilizes all of the methods and and stuff from that class but maybe make some tweaks and changes uh, <clears throat> this is what allows us to do that. So you would have to come here. I'll put the link in the description and grab and copy all of this code here. And we're going to save that into a uh, class.js file. So there is one thing that we will need to do in this file though uh, before we can use it. We're going to remove the bottom two parentheses that open and close parentheses there. And up at the top before the function, we're going to just type in define. So what this is essentially going to do is this is going to make it so that this is set up and ready for required JS. So once we've got that changed, we are all set. 
and we're going to open up the game.html. Now this is just a core HTML base skeleton HTML file that was created when I created the file with WebStorm. So we need to write a script tag and that's going to have an, an attribute called data-main and set that equal to js slash app. And this is going to refer to our configuration file which is in the JavaScript or JS folder. The other thing that we need to do is link to require.js which is in js slash libs slash require dot js and we will close that script tag I believe this is all that's going to need to be done in here we do want to make sure that we uh, I don't believe we need the forward slashes in either situation here um, and make sure not to put the dot js require uh, ignores the dot js because it's assuming that each extension you're referring to is dot js so once we've got the game html uh, created we can go into our app.js so it's going to already have some stuff in it I'll explain it so that uh, you can type it out yourself as well actually you know what? it doesn't so I've gotten rid of that just for the tutorial so uh, one thing required js has is a config um, function and this is going to configure a few things one is the base base URL and the base URL is where all of our modules will be loaded from or our classes so the root folder so that's going to be JS that's where all of them are going to be looking when we refer to a class or a module it will first start in the JavaScript folder and then look for it uh, from there so the next thing that we have after that is paths so these are going to be aliases for uh, any modules that we have so one of which is our class um, library that we just did so that was in libs slash class so notice that this also does not have a .js extension and it also is not a full path uh, from the game.html rather a full path from uh, the JS folder so we've cr we've basically said hey require JS everything that we refer to is in this folder and this just saves us from having to type in JS every single time when we know that it's going to be in each in uh, each module so from here we also have Java or jQuery which I am NOT going to take the normal uh, nomenclature or the normal um, capital Q we're gonna have capital uh, for the first letter of all of our modules and libraries that's also in libs slash jQuery and these I believe are the only two that we have currently and this should be fine okay now uh, we also I'm going to throw this launcher JS which I believe is uh, is going to be empty we're going to throw this inside of classes and we're going to create inside of the app folder I'm going to create a new JavaScript file real quick called main uh, and this is something that is required with required JS so uh, inside of the main uh, before we do anything in the main let's go to the bottom of the apps.js and we'll say require uh, app slash main oops main now this is going to require the main uh, the main JavaScript file essentially for our application so now within the main.js we're going to define or essentially will require in here as well uh, and it will be launcher so before I go any further with this uh, main we do need to now add in our app.js launcher so I'm going to put a comma here and I'm gonna put classes from this point and we'll put uh, libraries libs there 
This is just so that we know what what the aliases are for. So first off, we're going to have a launcher. And this is going to be in our app slash classes slash uh, our apps and slash classes folder. And then it will be launcher. So all of our classes, I believe, are, are going to have a capital letter for the file itself as well. So now what this does is this allows us to refer to this directory, this whole path, as just launcher. So now in our main, we can require launcher. And in here, we'll be able to refer to the launcher. Um, so what I'm going to do in launcher is now we will define uh, our first class. So this is our first definition. So we'll say define. And it's going to require class, which we've uh, grabbed, you know, that library. And I think from here, that's all I'm going to require in this function. And then we're going to take whatever class returns, and we're going to be able to refer to it as uh, the variable class with a capital C. So I'm going to create a variable called launcher. It's going to be equal to class.extend. So now we're basically allowing it to uh, take all of the uh, the stuff from the class library and that which will allow launcher to be extended if we wanted uh, gives it the the constructor and all that so how we do this is we pass into the extend function a object and it will have an init uh, function which is basically the constructor and then all the stuff we want to be done in the constructor um, finally with with all of this we're going to want to return uh, return something with this module in this module we're, we're going to return launcher uh, which allows us to uh, take advantage of any of the code we put in here within uh, whatever module requires it so now once we've got this I'm going to just do something simple document dot title is equal to tile game so if the code runs correctly and everything's set right, um, we should be able to we should be able to uh, look at our game.html uh, up in the title and it should say tile game. So from here, we're going to go to main.js and you know what? Let's make it a little bit more fun. We will say uh, title. We're going to pass into the constructor what we want the title to be instead of just doing it hard coded like this. Um, so I will replace this with title. And now when we come to our main.js, we have launcher here. And we're going to ref be able to refer to what it returned as launcher. So now I can say var or var, which is defining a variable. Um, var launcher is equal to a new launcher and we're going to pass in the title into the constructor so the constructor we will say um, we'll just put tile game here so because we are we because of the way that we've set up launcher to be a new class and in the constructor take in title whenever we create a new launcher we can pass in the title there and it will um, set the document title to that so if we come and check it out and refresh the page we do have an an error it says property extend of undefined so we have to go back in here and go to our launcher so it says no we've got class and we know that it's referring to the right file. It's just for some reason not returning the class um, uh, within the library. So we define function, and it should return class, but it may be. the fact that we should return 
return class. Let's see. That should be all we need to do. So in the class library, underneath this uh, closing bracket, we do need to return class. Let me see if that takes care of it, and we'll move on. Look at that. Up at the top, we've got tile game, so we know that must be working. Um, if we inspect element up in the top, we should see in the header that the title says tile game. And if we take a little bit closer look at our script tags, we've only put in the require.js script tag. But require, uh, require.js itself has taken all of these things that are important and loaded them up. So you can see that, uh, you know, we've got the class, the launcher, the main file all loaded up, even though we didn't personally uh, put these tags in there. And that's kind of the idea of require.js. It's going to take care of all of these requirements for us. It's going to make sure all of our libraries that are important to a specific module are loaded in and ready to use before it even tries to use it. So these are some really cool things uh, about, uh, about require.js. So at this point, we've got everything set up. We can continue to work. We're going to start working in the classes folder a little bit more. Uh, we might do uh, like a display class, um, uh, a display package, a graphics package. So we're going to follow along with his tutorials. Um, I may compact a, mine a little bit so that uh, we cover more things per video. Um, just so you know, I can get uh, some things taken care of because I don't think that we will necessarily uh, have as many things that as he does um, in certain areas but we may have a little bit more in others so um, now that we've got this all working in the next tutorial let's start uh, working with the canvas so I will see you guys in that tutorial